talk, talk about uh, the father should be a superhero, you know, to to these children, but he's turned into uh, kind of like a, what, what, what did you say? <laughs> yeah, I mean, but. but was my father was a superhero, right? I was raised in a way in which I really viewed my father as a superhero, but that was also based on the fact that he did not submit to the will of my mother, right? If you have a man who's scared of his wife, can he truly be a superhero in any regard? And that's a question. I don't know. I don't think so. I can't imagine a man who's scared of his wife acting like a superhero because women have completely different life goals and instincts to men. This is something that most people forget and don't understand. I have it all the time. I get a, a chick or whatever. And she says, I wish you didn't work so much. Why are you always busy? Why are you always working? The fact that I'm always busy and always working is the reason you were attracted to me in the first place. But now that you have me, you're going to pretend I shouldn't be doing those things. You're going to try and change me. Now you want me to stop working, right? That's the only reason we even, that's the only reason you were even attracted to me in the first place. It's kind of amazing. And if, if you allow a female to impose her will on you as a man, no matter what she says about how it's going to make you better and make her happier, et cetera, it always leads to the same place, which is misery for both parties. You have to be an iron frame. You have to be resilient to the insidious because it's insidious, right? They try very, very hard. They're very, very clever. They cook, they cook nice meals. They're warm, you know, and they're all like, you know, baby, you don't have to go. Don't go, Jim. Stay here with me, et cetera, et cetera. And I think that's a very dangerous path to walk down. Man, he's so right. He's so right. And when we're in this relationship, when we're talking with someone like this, like, Listen, it's feminine. It's the feminine energy. It's the femininity. Like this, it's mm. soft. Masculinity is hard. It's rigid, right? And then when you have the femininity, it softens. So when the woman comes into your life, she softens you. But it's like you have to be really careful as a man because if you become too soft, well, then that just breaks up the whole dynamic. It ruins everything. And, you know, the question that he, he rose, he, he brought up is very... It's a legitimate question and i think the answer to that is very obvious you know a lot of people might say otherwise but like come on bro like when i was a kid you know unfortunately my parents got divorced but i remember my dad he um he came to the house he had come from puerto rico to visit and um he gave me one of those like little the little toy uh, the toy thingies the, the toy guns wh which makes a little like just noise. You put like this like thing in there and it makes the pop, like pop, pop. And there's nothing that comes out. It just makes the pop. And my dad was like, listen, don't tell your mom about this. Don't show her. Just when you go outside to play with your friends, you can play with it, you know, but like, don't show her. And I looked at him. I was like, I just smiled. And then he went into the garage. My mom was in the garage. My grandma was in the garage. And then I just ran out, opened the door. Bang! closed the door and ran back in, bro. And like, my mom came screaming. She took the little thing away, the toy. And then my dad was like, bro, like I told you not to tell her. And it's like, just looking back, just reflecting on that. Like he was scared of her. He was scared of like her being angry and like saying all this stuff. And it's like, I don't know, maybe that did affect me as a kid. <laughs> You know, bro so. to some extent here's the thing you want to you never want to be so far up your ass that you're not open to feedback and constructive criticism even if it's from your wife so for things like islamic matters bro the deen that's a different story right we're talking about andrew tate is talking about the the wife that says jump and the husband's like how high you know what i mean the one that he doesn't have any backbone where she's just testing him bro saying stuff like oh you don't need to go to the gym you could just stay here you don't have to work so much it's like nah bro she's saying that because that's how she feels in the moment but she doesn't have the foresight to see that if you don't have that where's the resources if you don't have that where's his mission where's his purpose in life yeah yeah 100 in islam the men are supposed to be the leaders and the protector and the provider these are three very very important things and not just in islam generally but to masculinity in general to manhood in general can you be a man in islam if you're not providing for your family that's one of your your obligations you're not fulfilling can you be a man in islam if you're not protecting your family that's another right that's an uh, upon your family that's an obligation in Islam. Can you be a man without these things? I would say no, because these are obligations God gave us as men because of the way he created us. And if you are not fulfilling them, if you are not being the leader of your house as you ought to be, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded the men to be, then you are lacking and that's something you need to work on. And on top of that, what happens is your wife has to be the leader. She has to end up being the leader. Because if you have kids, someone needs to take care of them. Someone needs to lead the house. Someone needs to be constructive and, and you know, guide 
the household. And if that's not you, then she has to take it on, unfortunately. And then you become a follower of her. And Islamically, it's supposed to be the opposite way around. And you'll mm-hmm. see it as a man with your wife. As soon as you take control, not in the way where you're just power hungry, a tyrant to go do this, go do that, go cook for me, make this. In, in the way where you're a leader, you can be kind hearted, you can be strong, you can be firm and be a good leader all at the same time. She will respect that. Your kids will respect that. They will appreciate that. And they will actually learn from you how to be a leader in their own circles, in their own life. Mm, and I believe that your wife is a complement to your life side by side. She's not coming first. The only thing first is Allah. When the things that Allah calls you for, you know, takes precedence over anything else, it's time to put that first. It's not time to worry, okay, what about this? What about that? There, I believe, I think we were talking about this with Anhel, if not someone else, but um, there's a principle. It was like accommodate, but don't, I don't know what it was. But it was, it was, I think I don't know. Yeah, yeah. What was it? It was, um, accommodate, but don't assimilate. In- integrate, don't assimilate. Yeah. One or the other. Mm-hmm. One or the other. Where it's like, keep the emotion, have an emotional intelligence, the uncle to know, you know, about the states of people, the preferences of people, the things that take them off. But like, don't be walking around on eggshells. Don't be like intimidated. Don't change who you are for that. Yeah, 100%. And even when you do things for them, the best way to conduct your life is to do things for people with remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it's actually for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like if you go and you, you know, you help your wife with the dishes or something. Yeah, you're doing it to make things easier for her. But if the first reason you're doing it is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to please Allah, because, you know, pleasing your wife is also a form of pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and pleasing your husband is a form of pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then that's the best way to live. Man, it reminds me of, um, you can cut this out, but I just want to share this with y'all. It reminds me of like, this thing that I hear a lot of the, the scholars, or not the scholars, but particular people saying, and they're like, oh, you, and not just that, but like, you have to put your wife first. You have to put your wife first. I'm like, oh, that's, that's like, that's real dangerous advice that you're giving people. You yeah. know, like, like they said something that was like really, it hit the nail where it's like, you, you work, so that you can enjoy the life that you have, you know, with your wife, with your kids, with your family, with your friends. So you can donate, so you can experience things. You don't, you know, you don't do everything just so that you can work. So it's basically saying, like, don't make work your priority. But then to say, like, make your make your woman your priority, like, oh. Yeah, yeah, subhanAllah. And it's like, it's crazy, bro, because put, put her over who? Put her over Allah? No. Put her over the kids? Yeah. No, put her over my mom, maybe in some cases. Put her over myself? Yeah. Why? Why? Mm. Why like why can't I just be wise? Like if putting my wife above myself is going to like harm me. And that uh, it might sound crazy, but it will. In some cases, putting your wife above you will harm you. Because if she wants you to go uh, do 11 errands after you just worked like 12 hours, it's going to kill you. Sometimes you need to put things aside, take care of yourself so you can get back on track and do what you need to do. Mm. And and that's okay. But the point is, you have to be wise about it. That's a part of being a leader. So, Anhel, mm-hmm. bro, you're right, man. You put anyone first, then you basically worship them. So you put Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first. You know, I have an amana here. I have an amana there. I have an amana back there. I have a mana over here. And I have a mana right here with myself. I have to take care of myself as well. And that's the best way, inshallah. Alhamdulillah, let's wrap it up. With that being said, Allahumma atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa kina adhaab al-nar. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum as-salam.